All right, Danny, you think the president's going to buckle from pressure from the far left and maybe try to rein Israel in? Well, so far he has not, um, although like w literally in the commercial break, I was reading that um, the Biden has just had a call with Netanyahu in which um, he reiterates the right of Israel to defend itself. But he says something in there about how he does support the calls for a ceasefire. Um, but it's not uh, that oh. strong. So I want to I, I literally that just happened. So let me digest that and see we can all see how that turns out and how that's interpreted, because as you diagram the sentence, as you can see, however, I think that he has been very um, much restrained in terms of allowing Israel to defend itself, doing what it needs to do, and, and pushing back pretty aggressively even from the White House podium today on far left extremist views like those, the ones that we just put up there. Um, another thing that I think is clear is that, that Biden understands, I believe he understands, and Blinken understands, that Hamas has to lose. Because if they are given an inch here, they will take a mile. And we know that Iran is behind this. And so there's all sorts of geopolitical things that go forward. Last thing I would say is we hear a lot about foreign aid and complaints about foreign aid. I get it. I hear it. But think about the military aid that's gone to Israel and how well that has been put to use. You are actually seeing it on your screens that the Iron Dome is successful. And people on the left will, might ask, or the far left extremists, I should say, might say, well, why doesn't uh, Gaza have an yes. uh, Iron Dome? Well, they, their Iron Dome is not sending rockets in the first place. That is how they could protect themselves from having rockets rain down on them. Yeah, Dagan, a lot of the aid we send Israel, they actually have to then make purchases from defense contractors, like Dana said, and, and invest in an Iron Dome, which saves countless lives. Right, and we can't track the money that wound up in the hands of Hamas terrorists that we sent to Iran as part of the nuclear deal. And all of the money that flowed into Iran um, with the reopening uh, of that country, and they want to get back into that deal. Biden and co. have talked about that. But in terms of the messaging that we've heard for years from Ocasio-Cortez and Elon Omar and Rashida Tlaib, if it was anyone else who was consistently and publicly as anti-Israel, against Israel as those, Joe Biden would openly be calling them anti-Semites. Because that's yeah, what they Juan, are. Do you think there's an anti-Semitism problem in the Democratic Party on the far left? Are you kidding me? I, 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 this conversation is so wild to me. I think I think they're like you know. Well, it's the two only aid Jewish that Bernie Republicans wants to cut and, for Israel. Excuse, I'm sorry. Let me just finish this point, Jesse. But I mean, I, you asked the question. I was responding. I think they're like 23 or 24 of you know Jewish Democrats and two Jewish Republicans. I just don't think that there are too many Jewish people who think that uh, you know Taylor Green has got to have their back. You know, what I mean, I, I just don't think that people react that way. The, what what we need here. I just think I it's plainly means, a ceasefire. Okay. You have, you have, you have Palestinian children dying. You have huge apartment buildings being destroyed by the Israelis, and the Israelis clearly, you know, control the timetable here because they are so superior in terms of military might. As been pointed out, they have the Iron Dome. So what you get is a David and Goliath situation where Hamas, which is the extreme, and they're just terrible. I mean, they shouldn't be firing these missiles, but they are. But they, you know, so many of their missiles are intercepted by the Iron Dome. On the other hand, Israel's firing rockets and, and missiles and blowing up stuff. Uh, and the, the, the right, Palestinians so in Gaza one, can't protect not, themselves. Let me, fi so let me finish Hamas because this is, is so important. I, it's just one and person. So Israel let me should just say it's one person here. By, I, I'm okay. sorry, Jesse, but you're so wrong on this because guess what? This, this didn't start because Hamas started it. This started because people were being... The, set, the Israeli settlers were coming in with Israeli army forces. It wasn't even a matter of eviction. It was a matter of displacing Palestinians from properties okay. that they lived in. And then you get people angry. I mean, so much of this goes back to Trump and Netanyahu making a deal okay. <laughs> with allies well, and intended to go Israel after Iran. No, I'm just saying they're going after Iran and Iran's nukes. Okay, I understand that. But they absolutely left the Palestinians behind the two-state solution that America had pursued for decades, just just right. left behind. And so the Palestinians feel absolutely voiceless right. and powerless. All right, Juan. All right, Greg, go ahead. 
I'm just sitting here at this table listening to this, and I just don't know what's going on. That's my impression. Look, we can go in and talk about the so-called displacement, but it's a land dispute that Hamas used as an opportunity to start this war. If you want to go into that, we're going to need an hour to go into it, but don't, don't spin it around like that. And if you're going to use the David and Goliath analogy, use it appropriately. This David happens to be the one that keeps starting the damn fight, all right? And th this, the most absurd argument is, is that the fact that somebody is a superior military force somehow makes that a war crime. The fact that rockets aimed at Israeli citizens are protected by the Iron Dome, but the people that are sending those rockets aren't, and somehow that is a war crime? No, you know what? They built the Iron Dome to, to, to protect Jews and Arabs who live there. There is a ton of Jew Jews and Arabs that live together under the dome. This argument of a massive imbalance. I mean, if I start punching Tyrus, if I show up one day and go into his office and just start punching Tyrus, <laughs> and, oh, and so because Tyrus is bigger than me, he can't punch back and that he's guilty of a war crime if he picks me up by my legs and dangles me? No, that's what he's got to do. So you got to tell, you have to tell uh, the, the bullies, the bullies can still be small, right? And as for these deals, the Abraham Accords are holding firm. Uh, these are independent commitments uh, with Israel, with Arab states, right? This is the exact kind of threat to peace that these accords mm -hmm. were meant to endure. Yet you're not getting a peace. You brought up Trump. No one else did. But the fact that these deals are keeping this this whole Arab state together says a hell of a lot. A hell of a lot. It's just idiotic to like say like, oh, you're you're blaming the victim. It's disgusting. There you go. Hey, who's the victim? Let me get Israel's okay. the victim. Oh, come uh, on, Greg. yeah. Yeah, All right. come on. Please. What do you mean, come on? That's not well, actually I think a you'd debate. feel a little bit different if rockets were flying into your neighborhood. <laughs> yeah.